What's going on YouTube? This is Necro Steve, and we're back for round two of the LBA tryouts. Uh, my opponent in both of these matches, this is actually going to be a double header, because I will admit I broke the rules in the first match. I had leftovers on two Pokemon and a Citrus Berry, um, and my opponent Clumsy Monkey, who also does upload, I'll leave his link in the description and call me out on it. So we had to do a rematch. Uh, but I will go ahead and post both matches because they were both pretty good. This is the second team I was con uh, using in the LBA. And in this team, we have Assault Vest High Dragon, Life Orb Caesar, and then a nice uh, Jellicent Florges Core. I, I really like the flo the core of Jellicent and Florges. Um, and of course, Dompin is there for a little bit of offensive pressure, um, a secondary way of uh, a little bit of priority attack there with Ice Shard, and of course, setting up and getting rid of Entry Hazard. So. I really wanted to try out Life Orb Caesar though. He just seems to put a lot of pressure on opponents who expect Bandit Caesar. Um, but anyways though, he starts off with his Galvantula. I was worried he'd have the Energy Ball, but I'd rather go ahead and put up my um, Entry Hazards, even if he has it, because I know I have Sturdy. And there you see the, the Citrus Berry is immediately activated from his Giga Drain at the beginning of the match. You don't normally see Giga Drain on Galvantula, normally you'll see Energy Ball. But since I know he'll probably just go for Giga Drain again, we're going to go out into Florges. This does give him a bit of an easy opportunity to set up his sticky web, but I can just spin that away with Dauphin later if I have the opportunity to. Uh, furthermore, since Caesar is one of my main win conditions, I'm not too worried about sticky web. Uh, just the priority bypasses it. So even though this is a, this is actually a more physically uh, oriented, no, I guess it, it has a lot of physical investment, but it's more especially defensive Florges as opposed to the physically defensive one I usually use. Um, but it definitely is going to work out in this battle. I really like the synergy between Florges and Max Physical Defense Jellicent. Uh, he does manage to hit a Thunder and get a critical hit, but uh, that's not too bad, I guess, because I survive it and I get my wish back. But man, if he had KO'd my Florges right there, that would have made this battle a lot more difficult. So now he's going to go out into his Cresselia, and I really need to scout what moves this Cresselia has. Uh, depending on the moves it has, my Hydragon is either going to be a great wall for it, or it's going to blow it out of the water into it, go it with Moonblast. Uh, he does expect me to switch, just go straight for Toxic, which I don't mind really on Jellicent, plus I have Aromatherapy on Forges. Not, not too worried about it. I did put Shadow Ball onto Jellicent just in case I ran into either of the Lati twins, Unfortunately, it's not going to be too useful here because this is a Calm Mining Cresselia. And so since I've seen Calm Mine and Toxic, it tells me that he is mono attacking. I just need to figure out what that single attack type is. If it's Psychic, I'm great. If it's Moonblast, not so great. Um, and when I tend to run mono attacking type sets, I don't like it if my opponent has an, an immunity to the one type. So that's why I don't like Crocoon. It's just too easy to run something with Water Absorb or Storm Drain. And plus, just running Crow sets generally... Not my not my cup of tea. But here I went on to High Dragon. And we're gonna U-turn because I was still I was just very worried that he had Moonblast. And so I moved, I U-turned out into Caesar, expecting the Moonblast, and he went for Toxic again. And so either and that that was kind of a weird turn because I didn't know if he expected me to switch into Florges or if he just didn't have anything to touch um High Dragon. So since he decided to switch out on that turn. I knew I could outspeed him and hit him with a bug bite if not for the sticky web. So I just wanted to put some damage onto something. He switches out into Man Bandy Buzz, and I am quite okay with forcing that thing to roost. Um, also, if I force it to defog, he'll get rid of his own sticky web, and I can set back up my Stealth Rocks. So he does uh, go ahead and go for defog, which is awesome because now I can really utilize the full speed of Mega Manectric, whom I have not used that much. I was really proud of this one because I was actually able to breed Hidden Power Ice on it relatively easily. Uh, normally, breeding hidden power is kind of a pain in the butt, but that that one dual butts there in a sense. That hidden power on Mega on uh, Galvani there came out pretty pretty well. So I decided to go for HP Ice instead of going for Thunderbolt, just in case he switched into his Nidoking. King, and he actually ends up going out into Nidoking. King. So that tells me number one, he was expecting the obvious move. It's good to pick up that information there, and number two, maybe his Nidoking King is Scarf since he decided to just go right out into it like that. Uh, I ended up going out into my Jellicent, hoping that he would go for uh, maybe Ice Beam or something. I don't know. He went for Earth Power, and that did a lot of damage to Jellicent just because Jellicent is more physically inclined on that specific build. And so I, if he is locked into Earth Power because of a Scarf, 
Then I can go into High Dragon and force him out, and that works out really well because he switches into his Rotom as I get a critical hit on him with a Draco Meteor. Um, that critical hit didn't really matter because this is a, a bulky High Dragon with Assault Vest. It's much more inclined to take special hits than it is to really deal damage. So, uh, and using that alongside Florges with Wish Support, when I can bring in, I can bring Florges in on those uh, fairy type attacks, or even sometimes the ice and fighting type attacks, if they're special or weaker and weakly inclined, then that that's some decent synergy right there. Uh, he does go out into Halucha, and I didn't know if he just didn't have experience with Florges, but there was no way Poison Jab was going to KO me at that level of HP, unless I had no HP investment. Um, he does surprise me with Focus Sash. I didn't expect that. Most Halucha definitely don't run Focus Sash, but it definitely worked out for him in this situation. Because uh, Focus Sash would still activate the Unburden ability that Halucha most commonly runs. Now going out into my Jealousy here was kind of just to see what he was going to go for. Um, he goes for Aerial Ace, and so that's enough to take out my Jealousy, which sucks. I really would have preferred to have the core in place there. But now I figured I could switch into Dom Fan and force him out, because now he's expecting Ice Shard. Good time to step back up Stealth Rocks. So now that he I forced him out, he either has to go back into Manny Buzz and Defog again and take the Stealth Rock damage, or his Palucha is dead upon hitting the field. And I know that my Hydreigon is going to be a wall to 90% of Rotoms, because most of them are either Scarf or they're just bulky sets. And they're not running coverage for Dragons necessarily. They tend to just Volt Switch out of there. And so he brings in his uh, Cresselia on Hydreigon. And the way he brought that in, I think he was trying to scare me into thinking that he had a way to hit my Hydreigon. But at this point, I have enough knowledge in the battle to know that he does not have a way to hit Hydreigon. So I'm just going to stay in here and go for Dark Pulse. And he does Toxic me, but I can just go to Floor to Center Aromatherapy that away. Uh, so we're just going to keep on going for Dark Pulse here. And I'm able to take out Cresselia, which is fantastic because that thing is very, very bulky and quite annoying with the Calm Mind. Moonlight set. Uh, he does go out into Manny Buzz. I was hoping that I could outspeed him and hit him with a flamethrower, and I do. I don't have that. I don't have any speed investment on this high dragon, and it's a calm nature as well. So I was surprised that I outsped there. Manny Buzz isn't horribly slow, but uh, he must not have any speed on the Manny Buzz either. Now he does go out into uh, Nina King, and I didn't know what he was going to go for here. Nina King kind of has that four slot move syndrome going on there where he can carry so many different coverage moves. It's difficult to switch into him sometimes. But he just goes for Flamethrower. Not a bad move because if I had switched into Caesar expecting the Ice Beam or the Sludge Wave, that would have killed my Caesar. So now that I know he's locked into Flamethrower, I can go out into Galvani, the Mega Manectric again, and we can just Volt Switch out of here because I don't have to worry about um, any more shenanigans with Sticky Web or anything like that. He does decide to go ahead and sacrifice his Halucha to reset and then bring back his uh, Nina King at this point. Now that the Choice Scarf has been reset, he can repick a move. But now I know he's probably going to go for Earth Power because of the way he did that. Because he doesn't really have any reason not to go to Earth Power. So that was an easy switch back on to High Dragon. And now I can drop a Draco Meteor, as Poke might say. You can just drop a Draco on just about anything here. But I figured I'd go for Dark Pulse just to retain my special attack. Um, I really need to get into four just to get rid of this Toxic, because I would be basically still at full HP if he hadn't landed that Toxic from Cresselia all those turns ago. Uh, once again, he comes back in with Nina King. This whole time, he's just getting whittled down little by little. And here we finally see the prowess of the Assault Vest as I take the Stab uh, Sheer Force Boosted Sludge Wave very, very easily, and I'm able to finish off the Nina King. So... That was a really good first match. It was too bad that I broke the rules that were very clearly stated and I wasn't paying attention to that Citrus Berry kind of as a recovery item. Um, we do switch back over to the team that I used in the first round of the tryouts. Uh, we agreed to just kind of switch our most our Pokemon up and, and have another battle. That was very gracious of him to allow me to do that because I wasn't paying attention to the rules. And that's why you always have to read the rules, folks. Uh, I'm sure there's an Arrested Development joke in here where someone loses an arm. But anyways, though... Started out with Mammal Swine. I knew that he has Giga Drain, so I'm just going to go right out into Rotom. I really thought he'd switch, uh, so I went for a Leaf Storm, but he just stays in and goes for a Sticky Web, and I was like, well, crap, because now I, I'm stuck using Leaf Storm because I'm Scarf Rotom. Uh, hopefully, he's not going to go for the Electric move. Hopefully, he's going to go for Bug Buzz as I go out into my Skarmory, and that works out okay. And after Leftovers, I am unfortunately short of hitting the max HP for Sturdy, but I am specially defensive, so I figured I could take it, 
and somehow I take it. I, I definitely thought that was going to KO me. Uh, but unfortunately, with that range of HP, I can't really do anything right now, and I'm I'm at risk to kind of be revenge kill super easily. So expecting him to go for a thunder again, we're going to go back out into Rotom. And now I know I can KO him with another Leaf Storm if he decides to stay in. If he switches out, he has to deal with a layer of spikes. So not a bad situation there. And it, the switch in by Heatran was really obvious, but I thought he might stay in. I really wanted to get rid of Galvantula. Um, was the main issue there. But he goes into Heatran. That's going to be kind of an issue because Heatran can set up his Stealth Rocks. And seeing the leftovers there, it tells me it's probably a bulky Heatran. I'm just going to go on into Blastoise. That way I can threaten him with Aura Sphere or Water Pulse. And, of course, I can spin away the rocks if I can force him out. Hopefully he doesn't do one of those plays where I spin them away. He immediately sets them back up because that's kind of annoying to deal with, too. But Mega Blastoise is now on the field. And he just goes for Toxic, which really surprised me because I could have just blasted him in the face. But I really need to get rid of those entry hazards on my side of the field. So I get rid of those pointed stones and the sticky web. And I'm toxic. Unfortunately, now I don't have Florges to, to aromatherapy things away. Toxic was kind of the bane of my battling prowess in both of those battles. Or both of these battles, rather. Uh, and he also shows me Protect. So that means we're probably working with a Fire-type move. Toxic, Protect, and Stealth Rocks. And that means Blastoise isn't afraid of being in here. But that does mean that he can waste my Blastoise's HP just by going for Protect and whittling it down. I figured he'd set back up Stealth Rock. I'm going to bring back in Mammal Swan. Not only can I get up my own Stealth Rock at this point, but I can threaten him out with Earthquake. He does decide to go out into his uh, Cresselia. And fortunately, I decided... I actually ended up switching Hydragons. I didn't bring Triforce. I brought an old Hydragon from back in Fitchin that I named Genesis at, I think, one of my... I want to say one of my subscribers gave me this one. But anyways, though, I decided to bring him in because I know I can wall... Uh, Manny Buzz, and I figured he'd just go for Toxic because he kn he knew that I had that knowledge too. But what he doesn't know is that I have Earth Power on this High Dragon, and so he decides to go back into his Heatran. I just went for Dragon Pulse, trying to get some good neutral damage on something. And Heatran comes in, he sees that I have Life Orb, and it's like, well, he's probably just going to go for Protect. Uh, so I don't know that I want to show him that I have Earth Power. So we're just gonna roost. Yep, we're just gonna roost. He actually ends up not going for. Protect, which is exactly what I thought he was going to do. He goes for a Lava Plume now. Doesn't do that much damage, but it makes me wish that I had an Assault Vest just to take that that much better. But uh, since he's not switching out, now I'm going to go for Earth Power because I, I guess he's thinking if I had the Earth Power, I would have used it. I didn't want to use it immediately because I definitely thought he used Protect, but with Heatran out of the way, that really opens things up for Talonflame. That was, Talonflame was basically only stopped by his Heatran. Um, and of course I have a layer of spikes up and I have my Stealth Rocks up. So he's going to probably spin here, but that's okay because I've already broken his Sturdy. Um, I was really hoping that I could bring in Skarmory and I would die to the entry hazards before I switch in. But unfortunately I live with two HP, which I guess is good. I'm sure Steel Guard didn't want to get knocked out, but I was kind of trying to sacrifice it there so that it wouldn't be able to spin. And he's able to take me out with an Ice Shard anyway. So, but now I get a free switch into my Rotom with a Scarf, and I can obliterate something with Leaf Storm, and I decided to just hit what's right in front of me. Why not? Uh, I know he doesn't have Sturdy anymore, so why not just wipe him off the, the battlefield here? And that works out really, really well. I'm happy I didn't overpredict too much there, because a Volt Switch, he could have hit me with a knockoff or something like that, and that would have been a little annoying. Uh, we see Venusaur come in, probably going to be a Mega Venusaur, and... I was worried that he'd go for a sludge bomb, so I decided to go back out into Mammoth Swine and hopefully take a sludge bomb pretty well. I don't want to get poisoned, but wow, that one did a lot of damage with that critical hit. I decided just to go for Icicle Crash instead of Earthquake on the off chance that I flinch him. I knew that neither move would KO him, but I was hoping for a flinch. I get a critical hit, but it doesn't really matter because he recovers so much of that HP from Giga Drain um, with critical hits doing less damage than they used to do. Wow, an old school critical hit would have KO'd him. It's, it's interesting how that mechanic changed everything. But anyways, though, we're going to go into Talonflame. I'm just going to go for Brave Bird. That's just the number one way to kind of just seal that deal. And I'm able to take out Venusaur immediately. I'm not sure what's with my opponents leaving in Venusaur on Talonflame when they have really bulky switch-ins like Cresselia. 
Now granted, stealth rocks are up, so I can't switch out until I get rid of them, or in this case I decided to go for a roost, just to get the HP back. I wanted to make sure that Talonflame had plenty of HP for the late game when I'm just cleaning things up with Brave Bird. Um, he does miss Toxic, which may or may not have mattered really. Uh, I'm going to say that in the long run it didn't matter, I guess it mattered in the short run because I wasn't forced to go for Roost as much, but since I have Roost on my Talonflame and his Psychic is, only, is, is barely a 2-hit KO. Uh, it's not really going to matter too much. Now right there I just wanted to roost up with High Dragon Sun before I died to the Toxic. Uh, just because I, if I knew if I attacked I probably wouldn't KO him. And he has Moonlight. So there was no point in me attacking there at all. Really. Uh, so I'm able to get a free roost as he wastes a, a couple of his uh, Moonlight PPs there. Because he can't KO me at all. I'm already Toxic. And all he has is Psychic. So he brings in Galvantula, I'm able to get rid of his Stealth Rocks once again, which means that Talonflame has a lot more breathing room to do what it needs to do. I did not have a good switch into this Thunder. I, I guess I could have tried predicting something there, but I didn't really want to risk that, because I could have gotten to Rotom, but he very easily could have Bug Buzzed, and I really want to keep Rotom Scarf around. So unfortunately with Blastoise being a little bit uh, slower, or a lot slower actually, I really want to keep Rotom Scarf, especially for something like Hitmonlee. Now he surprises me with Hitmonlee when he brings it in because he does not go for Fake Out. That's why I just stayed in. I thought he was going to Fake Out. But he goes for Knock Off, which sucks because there goes my Choice Scarf, which was the whole reason of me preserving my Rotom in the first place. Um, now he actually gets his Unburden and a Lychee Berry Boost. This is not good. I am happy that I got so much HP off of his Hitmonlee because now I won't take that much recoil damage when I hit it with a Brave Bird. Um, he goes out into his uh, Cresselia, and I have not shown him this entire battle that actually has Swords Dance on this Talonflame. This is important because he probably just looked at that damage and figured, okay, if he had Swords Dance, he would have used it already. And we both know how much damage his Psychic can do to my Talonflame. So since I can kind of switch in and out here, and I have my Hydreigon to completely wall his Mandy Buzz, I decided to just go right out into my high dragon and he makes a great prediction and goes on to hit molly at the same time hits me with close combat which really sucks because now i have to go out to just talon flame talon flame is my only pokemon that i have left at this point and i need to ko the hit molly and basically a 75 percent hp cresselia so i'm going to go ahead and take out hit molly right away and when his cresselia comes in that will be the time that i go for swords dance uh, once again, he does not know that I have Swords Dance, so I figured he'd do the same thing that he did before, where he just went for Moonlight, expecting me to hit him and kind of just waste my time. But he actually goes for Toxic, so that's why I said it didn't really necessarily matter that he missed that one earlier, because he, he still ended up with Toxic on me, and I got rid of the I had gotten rid of the rocks, so I don't think that it mattered too much that he missed it earlier. Um, but now that I have a Swords Dance up, I believe that I can 2-hit KO Cresselia. And I also know how well I can live a Psychic type attack, so it really just comes down to how much HP he recovers with Moonlight. Uh, and whether or not I'm going to KO myself with recoil damage. So I was looking at my HP going, I think I'll have one HP left if I attack him, based on how much that that how much HP damage I took from the first Spray Bird. So I'm just hoping that this will KO the Cresselia, because if it doesn't, he can just hit me with the Psychic and that will be a good game. But I do KO him, and I live the recoil on 2 HP, and that is how you have an awesome battle with a fellow Poketuber. So I hope you guys enjoyed this extended upload. Uh, it was certainly fun to narrate. It was really fun doing these battles. Be sure to go check out Clumsy Mon Monkey's channel as well. And uh, look forward to the next battle that I upload. See you later, guys. Bye.